Coober Pedy in Outback Australia produces most of the world's opal. And it all began back in 1915 when a 14 year old boy, Willie Hutchinson, found some pieces of opal on the surface. But most of the opal is underground. And to get to it, you need to burrow, to sink shafts down into the ground to try and find where that opal might be. Now the problem is, the ground is soft and rubbly near the surface, so as you dig a shaft, it tends to cave in. To prevent that from happening, they used to shore up the sides with lumps of old timber, as you can see. Originally, the surface of the ground was here, but most of that has been washed and blown away so that you can see what the side of the shaft looked like. Now, at the top of the shaft, there was a windlass which had rope or cable which would allow them to lower a bucket down. And that was used to bring the rubble back to the surface and get rid of it. It also had another purpose. You see, miners often worked in pairs, and it was possible to use that windlass to lower a miner down below where it was all happening. Rob? Opal can be found anywhere from the surface to a depth of about 30 metres. And as you dug down, you found that the earth would get firmer. This shaft is about 50 years old, and the rock is so firm that it doesn't need to be shored up. But as the miners came down, they were watching the rock face for telltale signs. And one of them was this, a horizontal band. Because that's a fault. At this level, two layers have moved over one another. Now, when that happened millions of years ago, the layers opened up little cavities. And the water, drifting down through all this dirt and rock, picked up silica and other minerals and deposited them inside these cavities. And then, as the water slowly dispersed and evaporated, all of that inside the cavity turned to precious opal. So the miners would follow this level around, and that's why this tunnel runs horizontally. They've been doing this, looking for this precious opal. And they were looking for other telltale signs as well. And the most important one is a sloping line or slide where rocks have shifted diagonally. Because in this fault line, you may find some opal, but it's even more likely that you'll find opal in levels which come out in front of the slide. And also, if you find two slides that cross over diagonally in that region where they cross, it's likely to be very good for precious opal. So the next thing to do is to start excavating the rock in front of the slide. And from the way this slide dips into the floor here, you can see that there's a good chance that there is opal to be found in this region here. We just need to get rid of all this rock. Digging a mine just with pick and shovel was extremely hard work, so the miners would use explosives. They would dig holes into the rock face with something rather like a brace and bit, and into those holes they would place explosives. Either the commercial kind, poking it well in, or homemade variety, cheaper but much more dangerous. They were pushed well in, they were primed, and fuses were attached. And these fuses were cut so that the charges wouldn't go off together, they'd go off one after the other. You lit them and you got out of the mine fast. And from the top, you'd listen to make sure that every charge had gone. If it hadn't, you'd know that one might be down here waiting for you next time you came in. Well, in an instant, those explosives would open up a huge chamber like this. There would still be rock that had to be carted away in wheelbarrows and taken up the windlass, but at least the pickwork was done. Miners, of course, still use explosives, but these days they have many machines that make life much easier. This tunnel was made by a circular tunnelling machine which moves along and, with a series of cutting wheels, cuts through solid rock. There's a circular wheel there with diamond teeth which leads the way, and then two smaller wheels which rotate around the outside. Working flat out, one of these machines can cut through 20 metres of solid rock in a day. And the rubble is removed by large blowers or vacuum cleaners. It's taken up and out of the mine. More recently, Tunnelling machines have been developed which cut square holes. They move at about the same pace as the circular tunnelling machines, but they make a more convenient shape. Flat floor, flat ceiling, and vertical sides. So that when you come across the levels of opal, it's more convenient to scrape away below it and get at that precious gem. And these are what it's all about. This is the stuff they're after. Precious opal. Beautiful, full of life and fire. At the top, the precious opal is graded and classed, and the best pieces are cut and polished. And up come gems of unbelievably good quality. That collection alone is worth about the value of a house. From there, the gems go to a jeweller who will set them in gold or silver, with diamonds, pearls, whatever suits the individual nature of the stone. 
Well, beneath the dirt and dust of Cuba PD, there's lots more of this still waiting to be found.